VO2 Max, the holy grail of running performance. Everyone talks about it. Fitness watches measure it. Elite athletes obsess over it. But here's what nobody tells you. Most runners are training it completely wrong. You've been sold a lie about how to improve this crucial metric. The real secret? It's not what you think. It's not more miles. It's not longer intervals. And it's definitely not what your training plan says. What I'm about to reveal flies in the face of conventional wisdom. But the EBAU science is undeniable. Stay with me. This could be the breakthrough you've been searching for. Welcome to a journey into the science of human performance at its absolute peak. Today we're uncovering the hidden strategies for maximizing VO2 max that coaches don't talk about and training plans ignore. Prepare to discover why traditional interval training might be limiting your potential, why your body's hidden system holds the key to explosive gains, and why the timing of your hardest efforts matters more than the efforts themselves. This isn't generic advice recycled from decades-old textbooks. This is cutting-edge science applied to real-world running. By the end, you'll understand exactly how to unlock cardiovascular capacity you didn't know you possessed. Let's get started. Here's where most runners go wrong from day one. They think improving VO2 max requires suffering at maximum effort. Redline every interval. Push until you can't breathe. Collapse at the finish. Turns out, that's inefficient and potentially counterproductive. VO2 max represents the maximum amount of oxygen your body can utilize during intense exercise. It's the ceiling of your aerobic engine. But here's the fascinating part. You don't need to hit 100% effort to stimulate VO2 max adaptations. Research reveals something remarkable. The optimal intensity for VO2 max development sits between 90 and 95% of maximum heart rate. Not 100%. Not all out. Sprinting until you vomit. Why does this matter? Because sustainability. When you constantly train at absolute maximum, you accumulate massive fatigue. Your form deteriorates. Your nervous system gets fried. Recovery takes forever. You might complete the workout, but at what cost? The next three days, you're useless. Training at 90 to 95% intensity provides nearly identical stimulus with dramatically reduced recovery demands. You can train this system more frequently. More. Frequent stimulus equals faster adaptation. Exercise physiologists call this the velocity at VO2 max or VVO2 max. It's the slowest speed at which you reach your maximum oxygen consumption. Training at this precise velocity maximizes time spent stressing the aerobic system without the excessive fatigue of all-out efforts. Think of it like this. Imagine filling a bucket with water. Going all-out is like blasting water at maximum pressure. Most of it splashes out. You're making a mess and wasting. Resources. Training at optimal intensity is like a steady, powerful stream. Every drop goes in the bucket. No waste. Maximum efficiency. The duration of these efforts matters equally. Traditional wisdom suggests long intervals of 3 to 5 minutes. But studies show that shorter intervals with brief recovery can be just as effective, sometimes more so. The Norwegian method that's revolutionized distance running uses 4-minute intervals at VVO2 max pace with 3-minute recovery jogs. Why? 4 minutes? Because that's approximately how long it takes to fully engage the aerobic system at high intensity. Too short, and you're training anaerobic power. Too long at maximum effort, and fatigue compromises the quality of subsequent intervals. Four minutes hits the sweet spot. You stress the system maximally without destroying yourself. The recovery jogs are equally critical. They're not complete rest. They keep blood flowing, clearing metabolic waste while allowing partial recovery. This maintains cardiovascular activation throughout the session. Your heart rate might drop to 70 or 75% during recovery, but rebounds quickly in the next interval. Your cardiovascular system stays engaged for the entire workout, multiplying the training effect. Here's what elite programs understand. VO2 max sessions should feel hard but controlled. You should finish thinking, I could maybe do one more interval, rather than, I'm destroyed. That's the sign of proper intensity. Maximum stimulus with manageable fatigue. Now think honestly about your interval sessions. Are you going too hard and paying the price for days afterward? Comment below. Controlled intensity. If you've been overdoing it and need to dial back strategically. Here's the secret nobody connects. VO2 max isn't just about your heart and lungs. Your muscles play an absolutely critical role that gets completely overlooked. You can have the most powerful cardiovascular system in the world, but... If your muscles can't utilize that delivered oxygen efficiently, your VO2 max stays limited. This is the missing piece that changes everything. Your muscles contain mitochondria, the cellular powerhouses that consume oxygen to produce energy. More mitochondria with greater density means enhanced oxygen utilization. How do you build mitochondria? 
not just through traditional cardio. Strength training, particularly explosive movements and heavy resistance work, triggers mitochondrial biogenesis in ways pure endurance training cannot match. Studies demonstrate that runners who incorporate proper strength training improve VO2 max significantly more than those doing only running. This isn't about getting bulky. It's about building the machinery that uses oxygen. Plyometric exercises deserve special mention. Box jumps, bounding, explosive step-ups. These movements develop the stretch shortening cycle and recruit fast twitch muscle fibers. Fast twitch fibers have enormous potential for mitochondrial development but remain dormant in runners who only do steady state training. Activate these fibers through explosive work and you unlock additional oxygen consuming capacity. There's also the often ignored reality of running economy. Two runners with identical VO2 max can have vastly different performance if one moves more efficiently. Running economy determines how much oxygen you need at any given pace. Better economy means lower oxygen cost. Strength training improves running, economy by enhancing tendon stiffness, optimizing force production and improving neuromuscular coordination. Stronger tendons store and release elastic energy more effectively. You literally bounce more efficiently with each stride. Heavy resistance training, particularly focusing on single leg movements like split squats and step ups, builds the specific strength patterns running demands. Your body learns to produce and absorb force on one leg. Exactly what running requires thousands of times. Per run. Core strength factors in crucially too. A stable core provides a solid platform for limb movement. Weak core means energy leaks through unnecessary torso rotation and pelvic instability. You're burning oxygen on wasted movement instead of forward propulsion. Planks, dead bugs, and anti-rotation exercises build this essential foundation. Here's the protocol that works. Two to three strength sessions weekly, focusing on explosive movements and heavy compound exercises. Not boot camp. Classes or high rep endurance circuits. Actual strength development with adequate resistance. Sessions don't need to be long. 30 to 40 minutes of focused work produces remarkable results without compromising running recovery. The timing matters. Schedule strength sessions on the same days as hard running workouts when possible. This preserves true recovery days and concentrates stress on designated hard days. Your body adapts to the combined stimulus more effectively than spreading stress. Across every day of the week. Engagement moment 2. Here's a reality check. When was the last time you did genuine strength training, not just bodyweight circuits? Type, strength unlocks VO2, in the comments if you've been neglecting this crucial component. Your aerobic ceiling is waiting to rise. Now we arrive at perhaps the most counterintuitive secret of VO2 max development. Doing less hard work produces better results. Wait, what? Welcome to polarized training, the method that's transforming endurance performance worldwide. Traditional training philosophy suggests pyramidal distribution, lots of moderate intensity, some easy running, occasional hard efforts. This feels intuitive. You're working hard most of the time, so you should improve steadily. Except it doesn't work that way. Polarized training flips everything. 80% of your training occurs at genuinely easy intensity. 20% happens at genuinely hard intensity. Nothing in the middle. Studies comparing these. Approaches consistently show polarized training produces superior VO2 max improvements compared to threshold-based or pyramidal methods. Why does this work so effectively? First, easy running done truly easy allows complete recovery between hard sessions. You arrive at each VO2 max workout fresh and capable of hitting target intensities. Second, the hard sessions can be genuinely hard because you're not carrying accumulated fatigue from constant moderate effort. Quality over quantity becomes reality rather than cliché. Your VO2 max sessions become highly effective stimulus rather than mediocre grinding done in a fatigued state. Third, easy running builds massive aerobic base without interfering with high intensity adaptations. You're simultaneously developing endurance and power. The mistake most runners make is training perpetually at moderate intensity. Too hard to recover properly. Too easy to stimulate meaningful adaptation. You're stuck in no man's land, accumulating fatigue without proportional improvement. Elite distance runners worldwide have embraced polarized training with remarkable results. Norwegian runners dominating global competition. East African athletes maintaining supremacy. They're not training harder than everyone else. They're training smarter with clear intensity distinctions. Implementing this requires discipline. Your easy days must feel embarrassingly slow initially. Conversations should be effortless. Your breathing barely elevated. It feels counterproductively easy. 
but this allows your body to process stress from hard sessions and build endurance simultaneously. Your hard days become properly hard. VO2 max intervals at correct intensity. True quality work that drives adaptation. The contrast is what matters. Your body receives clear signals, easy or hard, no confusion. Hormonal responses differ dramatically between intensities. Easy running promotes parasympathetic recovery and aerobic enzyme development. Hard running triggers, growth hormone release, mitochondrial biogenesis, and cardiovascular expansion. Mix intensities constantly, and these signals become muddled. Your body never fully adapts to either stimulus. Research tracking runners over months shows those following polarized training improve VO2 max by 8 to 12%. Those using traditional pyramidal methods improve by only 3 to 5% despite similar total training volume. The difference is dramatic. Same time investment, more than double. The result, here's your implementation blueprint. Identify your true easy pace using heart rate or perceived exertion. It's probably slower than you think. That's your 80% pace. Then structure 1 to 2 high quality VO2 max sessions weekly. 4 to 6 intervals at VVO2 max with adequate recovery. That's your 20%. Everything else disappears. No tempo runs, no moderate pace long runs. Just easy and hard with clear distinction. Consider your current training honestly. Iwotiosia, percentage happens in that moderate middle zone? Comment now. Polarized training. If you're ready to embrace this proven approach, the results will speak for themselves. So what's the real secret to increasing VO2 max? It's not grinding through brutal workouts that leave you destroyed for days. It's training at optimal intensity rather than maximum effort. It's building the muscular machinery that uses oxygen through strategic strength work. And it's embracing polarized training that maximizes quality while protecting recovery. These aren't minor tweaks. These are fundamental shifts that compound into extraordinary results. Your VO2 max isn't fixed. It's not determined solely by genetics. It responds powerfully to intelligent training stimulus. The ceiling you think you've hit? It's probably artificial, created by suboptimal training approaches. Apply these evidence-based strategies consistently and you'll discover capacity you didn't believe possible. Your breakthrough isn't about suffering more. It's about training smarter with your body's natural physiology. If this video revealed insights you've never heard before, smash that like button right now. Subscribe for more science-backed training strategies that actually deliver results. Drop a comment telling me which of these three secrets surprised you most. And don't stop here. Click the video on your screen to continue building your running knowledge. Remember, your VO2 max represents your aerobic potential. Unlock it. Properly and everything else in your running improves dramatically. Your best performances are still ahead of you. Now go claim them. See you in the next one.